And now, let's give you a brief tour in here. So, inside the belly of this Intel iMac. I've got my blue guy right here is the power supply. Um, now, word to the wise, you should always be sure that your machine is unplugged before you're going in and working on it. That's just a given. But if you may have accidentally left it plugged in, do yourself a favor, don't touch the power supply. It doesn't feel very good. Um, even if you have unplugged the machine, there can still be some voltage held in the power supply. So it's one of the items here that you don't want to mess with unless your purpose is to actually replace that power supply. Um, other fun things that we have here, the large blue area is going to be your logic board. We've got our left and right speakers here. You've got your, um, there are actually three fans in this machine, one, two, and another guy underneath. You got your optical drive, and what we're going for is the hard drive. So, the hard drive on this particular model, <laughs> and just for reference, whoever was in here last routed this cable incorrectly. It shouldn't be going over the hard drive, but that's another story. This was a, a very old used machine. Um, the hard drive on this particular model is not held on with any screws. It is held on with this clip here, and it's kind of a tension clip. So there are two screw heads that go into a brace on the bottom of the drive and then up here there's the clip and you've got your tension from this springy piece of plastic. Um, depending on the age of the plastic it may be uh, more rigid than you'd like it to be. So this can also be a tricky part that again I'm going to encourage you to just be patient with. The technique that I like to use to get the drive out is I put my abdomen up against the foot to give it some support, and then I'm going to pull this black piece towards me and up, and the hard drive is going to flip upwards. So let's see, oh, and on this one it happened to be very easy, so that big build up for nothing, but you might get in there and find that it's difficult. You might need to use a good amount of force here, and that's okay. So now that I've got the hard drive released, I'm going to unplug the SATA and power cables from the side. So I've got my drive like this. And that was the pretty easy peasy part. Um, if you are going to be replacing this drive, there are four more screws that you're going to want to take out. So to show you, you've got a T8. You've got a T8 here. You've got a T8 there. And then on the other side, you've got your two T8s. You want to make sure that those are transferred along with this bracket to your replacement drive. And the other thing is that on some models, and it looks like this model does not have it for whatever reason, there is going to be a heat sensor that is stuck on the drive. And that um, is held on with double stick 3M tape. So you want to very carefully with your black stick pry it off and stick it to your replacement board. And if you want to see kind of what that looks like, it is this very similar to the blue board that's right over here. So it's a little sticky board and it would have a black um, heat sensor cable coming off of it. Alrighty, so we're going to pretend that it's all ready to go. So I'm going to plug it into SATA and power. And I'm going to make sure that those T8s are firmly in the brackets at the bottom. Make sure that there are no cables underneath where I'm going to be laying this drive. And I'm going to lay it down. And I want to make sure that I hear that nice click and that the drive clicked firmly into place on the rear bracket there. So great, the drive's in place. Now at this point, you would normally go ahead and put your LCD back in place, so you'd be sure to stick it to your EFI shielding in the back, and you would be sure, sorry, EMI shielding, and you'd be sure to lay the edges here down nice and securely to the LCD. Then you would also be sure to actually plug in your LVDS and screw that in place, as well as plugging in the inverter and sealing up the rest of the EMI shielding as nicely as you possibly can. Since I am specifically taking this apart to get that LCD out, I'm not going to go ahead and do that right now. So if you want to watch it done, just watch the video and, and rewind. That'll work. <laughs> Once that's all done and your LCD is back in place and it's all screwed in with your four T10 screws over here, um, you would put the front bezel back on. Definitely 
make sure that you're reconnecting your camera cable and your microphone. And you want to grab a piece of cap tape. and make sure that you're wrapping those cables nice and tightly. And then I like to tuck the cable into the bezel before I seat the display. I start with the bottom of the display. So what I just did that you didn't really see me do is I tucked the um, RAM releasers in and then I seated the bottom of the display. So you wanna make sure that your little RAM guys are sticking out there. And then what I usually like to do is actually feel the clasps inside. And you know what? We never looked at these. So why don't you take a look at the clasps in here? Can I show it on an eyesight? That's going to be the real question. So the clips that I was referring to before are these pieces of metal right here. So these are what you're visualizing in the beginning of that video when you're sticking a credit card in and trying to release it. And just to show you again what that looks like is you're putting the credit card in through the back of the machine at an angle and you're sliding it up under here and releasing that clip. So again, you would normally attach the cables. I'm kind of cheating and tucking them in. Get your RAM slots in there. And when you seat the bezel, you just want to make sure that it makes a nice clicking noise on both sides. Sometimes you have to go in and just open up that clip a little bit more. and then clip it right into place. So you want to make sure that it's nice and smooth along the back edge. You don't want any springiness. If it's springy, that means that the clip didn't actually clip in. So once that's done, you're going to take your nice soft sheet again, microfiber cloth. You're going to lay the machine down, and you're going to make sure that you screw together, don't hold it like this when you're at home, that you screw together those um, four T10, I'm sorry, T8 screws and put on your access panel, this guy right here. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. And if you have any questions, definitely shoot me an email, RebeccaK at smalldog.com. Thanks, bye.